when we talked about taking those things one at a time, that's the process of increase. When, when Jesus fed the 5,000, now understand this. When he fed the 5,000, we have no indication that they saw the fish multiply. You understand? It says that he took the bread, took the fish, and lifted it up to God and blessed it. Then he handed what he had to the disciples, and they distributed it to the people. So the indication is that as they handed it out, they went to him and gave him what he wanted. They went to the next person and gave them what they wanted. And the Bible says everybody there. And the estimates between 20 and 25,000 people that they all ate till they were full. Amen. And that there was 12 baskets left over. Amen. People say, who is the 12 baskets for? I don't care. I don't know. I don't care. The Bible doesn't say. I know there was 12 baskets left over. Well, that was that little boy's harvest. Maybe it was, but the Bible doesn't say that. So the Bible doesn't say it. You can't say it. But I heard Brother so I don't care who you said. Who, who said it? If it's not in the Bible, you can't say it. I don't know why that's important. But here's what I know. Here's what I know. That they, they only had five loaves and two fishes. The blessing multiplied five loaves and two fishes to feed, estimate, 20,000 people. And he did it one at a time. Fish and bread didn't just rain out of heaven and everybody just got their fill. They went to this one and fed them, this one and fed them, this one and fed them. And when they reached in the basket, there was another piece of bread and another piece of fish. And they fed that person. There was another piece of bread and another piece of fish. You don't need to see it all at once. You just need to have it when you need it. That's the only thing. I just need to have it when I need it. That's the idea of being fully supplied. See, being fully supplied is increase from having need. Do you understand that? When the widow, we read about this the other night, the widow in 1 Kings, when God sent Elijah to her, we have no indication that the meal barrel filled up to the top or the cruise of oil filled up to the top. We just know that every time she went, she had meal and she had oil. And it lasted for three and a half years. That's called increase. Amen. Amen. To go from having just enough to fix a little cake for you and your son and dying to having meal and oil whenever you needed it. And you're not only feeding yourself, you're feeding your son, you're feeding the prophet. The Bible says her whole house ate. So that means Pookie and Ray Ray and Chiquita and Ramon and Billy Bob and all of them were coming to her house and eating at her house and she was feeding all of them because she increased. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you see that? She was increasing. So God will tell you you need to do something. And you'll say, how can I do that? And He'll say, you have to increase. You have to increase. Amen. Look at Psalm chapter 115. I'm going to talk to you very quickly tonight about increase. Is that all right? Increase. Tell your neighbor, I must increase. increase. Now, now this is important. And and, and understand this. This is less about money than it is about your ability to do what God's asked you to do. I am, I am a, listen, I am a prosperity preacher. I, you know what that means? I preach prosperity. There's a difference between being a money preacher and a prosperity preacher. Prosperity denotes your whole life being full. Amen. Right over here, I have two pastors right here. They are prosperity preachers. Because they teach people they can reign in life through Jesus Christ. Reign as a king. And you can't reign as a king without being prosperous. Right? You just can't. But I need you to do something for me. I need you to get your eye 
off of what people think prosperity is. It doesn't matter what you drove up in here tonight with, that doesn't mean you're not prosperous. You understand? Yeah, but I've got an older car. That, that doesn't mean you're not prosperous. Maybe you like that car. I remember when I first pe- met Pastor Marty Cadell, you had a brown Toyota with how many miles on it? Well, not too many, but it was very old. <laughs> it was very old, wasn't it? 1980s? 89. 89. And he loved that car. I rode in that car. It ran great. I liked that car. And I could, I, I looked at his, I could look at his life, and there was no way that you could say he was not prosperous driving that car. Because life was just too good for the man. And still is. Now you might have come here in a brand new car. That doesn't mean you're more prosperous than the guy that came in a used car. Keep that in your mind. Because prosperity is tied to needs being regularly met. Amen. Now eventually, you'll drive something better than you've been driving. Eventually, you will live somewhere better than you've been living because you just can't stay at the same level. But don't, the Bible says the problem is that when people start prospering, Paul told Timothy, they become high minded. And that is one of the laws of poverty is you become high minded. I'm going to teach a series called How to Be Poor and go through the laws of, of what will make you not prosperous. When you're high-minded, well, look at what I'm driving. i got to be prosperous because, <laughs> after all, look at what I'm driving. That's high-minded. You should be thankful. You should rejoice. But God wants that car, that house, that money to have such a little hold on you that if you pull up at church and he says, sow it to that sister, you go, yes, sir. Ma'am, what's your name? And you sign the title over. Amen. The Lord had to teach me that. He had to teach me that because I want to increase. And very often the stoppage point in increasing is having a wrong view of prosperity. I believe everybody in here is prosperous to a level. I believe God wants to take you to another level at some point. But when you refuse to be high-minded, when you refuse to let things dictate to you whether you think you're prosperous or not, you're on your way. I don't care if you're living in a little rundown rental house and you don't have what you need and you, and you don't even have some of the things you need. You are prosperous because God says you are prosperous and you've got to get your eyes off where you're at and what you have and get them on what God said you could have and start working your way towards that. Amen. Don't let anybody tell you you're not prosperous because you don't have what they have or you don't have something new. It's not new that means you're prosperous. What makes you prosperous is when you're prospering in your soul and you know within you that God is the total source of your supply and you are increasing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that person, money will have no hold on them. Am I helping you at all? Yes. See, you know when money has a hold on a person. Let me, let me say it this way. Pastor Tony, I'm going to borrow a revelation from you if I may. When David, Pastor Tony and I were talking about this and he said this. I'll give him credit this time. <laughs> when uh, the next time it will be somebody said. And then the third time it will be like I always say. Amen. <clears throat> When David, when we were talking about this, when David went out to face Goliath, he had to let some things go. Saul wanted to clothe him in his armor. And you know the king had the best armor. He had the sharpest sword. Matter of fact, the Bible says that only Saul and Jonathan were the only ones that had a sword out of the whole army. Because the Philistines had taken the blacksmiths out of Israel to keep them, to keep them without weaponry. So Saul and Jonathan were the only ones that had a sword. So Jonathan, Saul gives David one of the only swords in the land. And David goes, wait a minute. I can't go in these. I haven't proven them. And so he goes out with a sling. 
and five smooth stones. But Goliath started running his mouth and David said, wait a minute, let me explain something. You have a sword and a spear and a shield. I have the name of the Lord. So I am more prosperous than you because I'm trusting in God alone, not in my weaponry. The Bible says that Paul told Timothy, tell people in your church that are prosperous not to trust in uncertain riches. Isn't that what he said? But tell them to do good, to distribute, to give to the poor. He didn't say give all your money away. He said, don't trust in your money. David said, you have a sword and a shield and you're trusting in them. I'm trusting in God. That's what Paul told Timothy. Tell them not to trust in uncertain riches, but to trust in the living God who gives all things richly to enjoy. Amen. Have money, just don't trust in it. Have money, just don't love it. Isn't that what it says? Trust in the living God who gives us, us means us, richly. Now think about this for a minute. Thank you for having that, keep that up there for me. If you took a bite of chocolate lava cake, <laughs> and you said, mmm, this is rich, what would you be saying? Oh, it's, oh, it's good. It's, oh, I can taste the chocolate. Right? It's just, mmm. I mean, it, it makes the back of your neck hurt. Oh, it's so sweet. You say something's rich, it's thick, it's tasty. Right? You understand? You never take your vitamins and go, oh, these are rich. You never do that. All right? Because vitamins don't taste good. They're good for you, but they don't taste good. He gives us richly all things. But notice, notice, notice. Notice the precursor. Charge them. Now this is a charge. So evidently Timothy had some people in his church that were wealthy, that were being high-minded. And he said, charge them. That means directly admonish them not to be high-minded. You know what that means? I'm no better than you if I have more money than you. You're no better than me if you have more money than me. Don't be high-minded. That stops increase. Now you thought I forgot Psalm 115, but we're going to go there in a minute. Nor trust in uncertain riches. Notice what he said. He didn't say you couldn't have riches. He didn't say you couldn't be wealthy. He said don't trust in uncertain riches. Why? The book of Proverbs says this. It says this. It says labor not to be rich. Because he said, why would you trust in that which is not? For money surely maketh itself wings and flies away like an eagle. The world says, here today, gone tomorrow. Well, we don't lose our money like that, but understand what I'm saying. Understand what he's saying. It's uncertain. He's telling them not to trust in riches. He's not saying they're going to lose all their money. He's saying when you put your trust in it, it's now uncertain. Who is certain? Who will never fail? What will never fail? So I put my trust in the Word, not in the riches the Word produces. You understand? And so when I begin to look at a new car, as evidence of prosperity, I stop increase. Because now I'm driving down the road saying, look how prosperous I am. Look what I got. And I drive by the plate glass window and slow down. <laughs> right? You know, I don't, I don't know if you do know. I hope not, but right? Pull up at the stoplight and look over at the car next to you. Pull up to the parking lot, you know, take up four parking spaces. 
get out and shut the door. See the guy next to you, you know, he's in his minivan. A couple years older than yours. Make sure he knows you got an alarm. Boop, boop. Yeah. I used to have one of those. Long time ago. See, now, now I'm high-minded. Listen, if you pulled up here tonight in a Bentley, that's okay. Don't be high-minded. If you pulled up here tonight in a 1972 whatever, don't be condemned. That changes nothing. Don't be high-minded. Trust in the living God. Why? He's the giver. And He gives us richly all things to enjoy. So that better car that He wants to bring you is so you can enjoy it. Just don't be high-minded. That house He wants to bless you with is to enjoy. Just don't be high-minded. That money that He wants to bring into your life, He wants you to enjoy it. Just don't be high-minded. It stops increase. The Bible says, and we read it earlier tonight in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, that God cannot, will not do without a cheerful, joyous, happy, hilarious, prompt to do it giver. My job is to be as generous as I can be with what God has given me. Amen. Some people, if they just learned to tip the waitress fair, they could increase. I heard, I, heard, I heard it said, am I helping anybody? I heard it said one time that the most unfavorite day for servers to work is Sunday afternoon. Because they make less money on Sunday afternoon serving Christians than they do all week. Man, I determined a long time ago, I will never let a sinner out tip me. I'm not going to let a sinner out tip me. Somebody sitting over there using the Lord's name in vain, talking about all kind of foolishness, and the server's got to put up with that, and then they come to my table and they hear me talking about the things of God and praying and talking about the Word, and, but the guy over here that they blush when they serve him leaves them a huge tip, and Mr. Preacher Man over here barely rounds down and gives them 3%. My daughter was a server for a long time. She's not anymore. And she served two preachers in Manhattan. She went to uh, (coughs) K-State. Still trying to get my head around that one. I'm a Texas man myself. Amen. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Has nothing to do with prosperity. I do believe that orange is more prosperous than blue. But that's okay. The, the point being, wait, you're going to KU, right? It's a great place. Amen. It's the promised land. Hallelujah. Now, I'm joking. Y'all know I'm joking. I'm, I got KU stuff hanging in my closet, all right? So, but but here's, here, here's my point. Here's my point. She served these men, and they just kept her running the whole time, you know, asking for this and asking for that. And when they left, she came walking by the table, and she thought, wow, they'd left her a $20 bill. She thought, boy, this is a great tip. And she picked up the check. It wasn't a $20 bill. It was one of them fake 20s. It was one of them 20 tracks. They didn't leave her a tip. They left her a track. And she told me, she said, Dad, I'm sorry to tell you this. Preachers are cheap. She said, preachers are cheap. They are the worst tippers ever. She said, they leave tracks. They witness to me. They tell me that I need to get saved, but they won't leave me a tip. What if that same preacher would have pulled out a $50 bill and said, young lady, you've done a great job. I would just like to tell you that God loves you. And I want you to be blessed. That's not just because it's my daughter. If, if your son or daughter was serving, I want them blessed. Because that's how you increase. You don't increase by shortchanging other people. You don't increase by trying to talk everybody down off the price of what they want for something. 
If you go by and somebody's got a car for sale and they want $3,500 for it, they want $3,500 for it. Yeah, but I don't think it's worth $3,500. And go buy another one. Try to talk the man out of his money. Yeah, but it's not worth that. Okay, then go find one that you think is worth that. I'm moving away from that because everybody wants a deal. But see, that stops increase. That stops increase. When the Lord told me about these things that he was telling me about, he never said, I want you to get a deal. He said, Philip, you got to increase. Amen. Do you understand that? You will never go anywhere in the world and then expect you to do something for free. That's only found in the church. We want people to come work on the church for free. We want, we want business owners in the church to give us a deal. After all, we are brothers. Well, I got a brother too named Fred, but I don't give him a deal. <laughs> Think about that. That stops increase. Am I helping anybody? Yeah. Psalm 115, verse 11. I'm going to get this to you. We, ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Who do we trust in? The Lord. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless. He will bless the house of Philip. He will bless the house of Michelle. He will bless faith builders. He will bless constructores because they fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. So the Lord shall increase us more and more. This means to continually increase. Hallelujah. In the Hebrew, it means we'll continue to add over and above. So God will continue to add over and above in my life. And this is a promise to us. One of the most exciting things that I've discovered about the law of seed time and harvest is this. It's not seasonal. If I'm consistent in my sowing, I'll be consistent in my reaping. Remember I told you the book of Ecclesiastes, the last chapter in the book of Ecclesiastes says, give a portion to seven and one to eight because you don't know where the increase is going to come from. The Bible says you, put your, your, you cast your bread upon the water and it will come back to you in not many days. When you sow a seed in the ground, in the natural, you don't know which seed's going to come forth first. That's why you plant more than one. Because you don't know which one's going to produce. So you plant a bunch. A farmer doesn't go out there and plant one kernel of corn and depend on that one stalk of corn. He fills the field with corn. You, you got to put seed in the ground because you don't know where it's coming. It's coming out of that seed, but you don't know which seed's coming. So it's not seasonal. Hallelujah. Do you see that? If you plant year round, you can receive year round. That's increase. If you'll keep planting consistently, you'll keep receiving consistently. If you continually cast your bread on the water, it will come back to you on every wave. The Bible says, isn't that beautiful? Continual sowing means a continual harvest. See, there's a supernatural momentum and a blessing cycle that occurs when giving and receiving are on a consistent, uninterrupted course. That involves increase. I'm sowing and sowing and reaping and reaping and sowing and sowing and reaping and reaping. 
I remember one time I, 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 heard, I heard a minister talking, uh, ministering, and he was in a group with a group of ministers, and he was sitting there, and uh, there was a, a very well-known minister, and I, I won't mention his name because it doesn't matter, but the principle is what matters. He said, the Lord told him, buy him a pair of shoes. And so he looked at this minister and he said, uh, would $500 buy you a pair of shoes? He said, yeah. So he gave him $500 for a pair of shoes. He was back at his office sometime later and there was a certain need they had. And they brought a check in and it was for $10,000 that met that need. And the Lord said to him, said, that's brother so-and-so's shoes. I've learned if I want to increase, when I hear the Lord say something, I'm, I'm going to be, notice, quick, prompt to do it. Why? I'm being told this is a season. And that's where a lot of people have a struggle with prosperity. They're going to wait till they have the extra to sow the seed. You won't ever have the extra because the extra is going to be in the harvest from the seed that you plant. Now, I've got to be cautious here because people will, will misconstrue what I'm saying. If God asks you to give something that looks like it's producing a need, do you think He knows it's producing a need? Of course He does. He's asking you, when you sow a seed, God's got a harvest on His mind. And if I know God is telling me to sow the seed, I can miss something if I don't. Amen. Do you understand that? So I made that decision a long time ago. If God told me to give away a watch, I'm not waiting until next week to give that brother the watch. I'm going tonight. I've taken many of them off in service and handed them to the person. Here you go. God bless you. Amen. Amen. If God told me to give somebody a suit, unless I've sweat in it, I'm going home, I'm getting it, I'm giving it away. As quick as I can. Brother, can I come over tonight? Why? I got a lot going on. I got to get seed in the ground in a hurry. I can't delay sowing. That delays reaping. Amen. So it is, it is what I do consistently. And remember, it's not just about money. It's about increasing. How is it that a good man will leave an inheritance for his children's children if I'm not increasing? You understand? I've got to increase. And the way I increase is by understanding these laws, this spiritual momentum. This is called increase. The key to increase is consistency. Because inconsistency lies the power. Well, the glory is all over this room. Praise the Lord. See, the longer you walk and the longer you sow, and the more deposits you make, the greater your harvest will be. Amen. You don't get a full bank account by making one deposit a month. Am I helping you at all? God wants you to get to the place where what you're tithing is what your salary used to be. Now think about that. I remember two years ago, the Lord told me, I want you to up the level of giving in your life. I want you to take it up a notch. Well, I thought I was giving pretty good already. Amen. But I didn't know what God was bringing. Now, I'm going to say this, and please understand my heart when I say this. So God says, I want you to begin a church in Little Rock, Arkansas. And we knew we were going to do that, and we, we worked on it, planned it. And in the back of my mind, I know the whole time, all right, now, Lord, it's just not going to be a good steward of your resources to go up there every week and, 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 and get a hotel room 
All right, because that's going to involve the hotel room. That's going to involve eating out. Amen. I don't know. I mean, I know people in Little Rock, but, you know, I don't know where a house is. Now, see, here's the key. I've, I'm learning how to increase. I didn't just jump out and go get the ads. Try to figure out where I can get a house. I just started praying about it. Well, we were scheduled to go with Pastor, to fly with Pastor Caldwell to El Dorado, Arkansas. And... Uh, so we went up there in August of last year to be with him. And we have some friends that are actually now members of the Little Rock Church that own some property uh, in uh, Perryville, Arkansas, and, uh, which is about 25 miles outside of Little Rock. And uh, so they have a cabin there that they actually built for Pastor Caldwell and Miss Jeannie to come and, and get away. And they said, well, y'all come and stay in the cabin. And, uh, and we'll visit and whatnot. And so we came and, and we stayed in the cabin. We left that night and flew where we were going and came back and spent the night. And uh, long story short, the next morning, we were having breakfast with them. Or lunch, excuse me. It was actually the other way around. We spent the night and the next day we flew out. So it wasn't that night. But we were, we were having lunch with them. And uh, the lady looked at us and said, We have this house on our property that we need somebody to take. We need somebody to rent it. And my wife was taking a bite of her food, and I saw the look in her eye, and she saw the look in my eye, and we got in the car, and we didn't say anything. We got in the car, and I said, you need to contact her immediately and tell her we'll take it. Now, here's what I'm trying to explain to you. You have to increase. Because I'm not asking them for it for free. Well, I'm a preacher. I have a vision for Little Rock. You need to help me. They are. They're making a house available. But remember, I'm a generous man. Remember what Psalm chapter 112 says about the man who will not be moved? He has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. You want to be a Psalm 112 man? You've got to be a generous man. So it's not all just about not being moved. It's being generous. I'm not ever moved financially because I know what seed I have in the ground. Lost my crowd right there. No, you're here? Amen. Chewing? All right, thank you, Marito. Amen. You understand? When you know you got seed in the ground, it's just a matter of time. It's coming up, and the harvest will always be greater than the amount sown. Because God multiplies seed that is sown. Amen. Amen. So now, you know, and I still got to live here. So I got a, a house payment here, rent payment here. Now I got the payment there. Lord, how's this going to happen? Oh, and, and right along there, God says, bring this boy on the staff. Amen. <laughs> wow, Lord. So you're adding a staff member. You're adding a house. You're adding all these things. You got to increase. Now, you know what the moral of that story is? The level of, of income went up. Amen. There was always more than enough to do everything that needed to be done. Amen. We never had to tell Mario, Mario, we need to wait a couple days. Don't cash that chair. <laughs> you know what? We never will. Amen. There's too much seed in the ground. Amen. We have to increase. And then right in the middle of this, we're just increasing. The Lord says, now uh, you need to bring Ronnie Poole on part time. <laughs> Lord. You, you want to know why? Because God will always, I'm, I hope I'm helping you. God will always take you and ask you for more out of you. And that means that you've then got to let something go. And you may have to pay the person 
that you need to do that. I can't ask him to invest all of his knowledge, all of his wisdom that he paid to go to school to learn and just ask him to invest it in my ministry for free. That's not seed. The seed I sow into his life will reap me a harvest to keep me fully supplied in good staff members. The seed, I, I don't pay him a check, I sow seed to his life. That's not, a, that's not a salary. That's seed. Amen. He's good ground. Amen. Amen. You sow into that war as ground, you get a harvest. Amen. I'm telling you. Every time. Hallelujah. Quickly, too. We've ne- now, I know it just sounds normal. Well, Pastor, we didn't expect you to ever be late on a payment. No, think about that. In a matter of a couple months, we're doubling the amount going out for lodging. We're, du- we're tripling the amount that we have now for staff, and we've never missed, missed a beat. Amen. The level of giving increased. Think about that. So you're going to start tithing what your salary used to be. These are principles I've learned. If you're believing for a certain amount of salary, you should tithe on that amount. Yeah, but Pastor, isn't that, I mean, you know, come on. No, wait a minute. You can't grow if you don't make room to grow. Mm. You understand? It keeps increasing and increasing and increasing. It goes from 10 times to 100 times. Amen. See, I read in Scripture that God multiplies. He doesn't just add to us, He multiplies. So our, our days are multiplied, our good is multiplied. Amen. That's why the Word tells us about abundance and abounding. These kind of words describe God and what He does. He abounds. He multiplies. He causes you to abound. That's increase. But I enter into that increase by being obedient to keep that seed in the ground. That's important. That's so important. Listen, here's why why teaching on prosperity gets a bad rap. Because it points people to just having things. Don't ever be arrogant when you're teaching on prosperity. I don't care how much you have. I don't care how much you're bringing in. That's not the point. The point is getting people to receive. That's the point. God multiplies. Do you see that? Look at Luke 6.38. You know this, but let's look at this law of increase. Am I helping you at all? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. See, I learned this, and, I, and I've told this story before. I, lear, I learned this. I had went on a, uh, on a ministry trip to liberal Kansas many years ago. It, was, it would have been close, well, if it wasn't, it was maybe, that was about 20 years ago, maybe, a little, little less than that. And uh, I got there, and when I got there, the man that had invited me to preach at his church got me in liberal and then decided that he didn't want me to preach. And so, well, I mean, I I barely had enough money to get there anyway and pay for my room and do some things. So, uh, Vinny invited me to stay for church anyway and hear him preach. (laughs) So I did. Amen. I I don't know. I did. And... uh, 
Uh, then I got in the car, got my family in the car, and we drove back where we were living over off 78th and State. I didn't have a lick of money. I, I had no money. And, and uh, I was going to get paid, and the Lord spoke to me, and He said, when you get paid, I want you to take your entire check and sow it to this ministry. You know, I look back on that, and it probably should have scared me. But I didn't have anything anyway. I mean, even that whole check wasn't going to meet the need. Might as well give it. Well, I sold that check. Now, I'd like to tell you that overnight I got a package in the mail and, and everything changed. And that wasn't how it happens because faith is a process. That was the first real test of my faith concerning finances that had ever occurred in my life. But I sowed that into that ministry. And it wasn't long after that that things begin to open up on my job. Opportunities begin to open up. God began to give me opportunities to go minister. God began to open up different avenues to bring blessing into our life. Amen. Amen. Because we were willing to sow. Do what God said. He said give it all. When you're faithful to obey the instruction that God's bringing into your life to produce increase, you'll increase. He may not ask for your whole check. It's fine if he doesn't. Don't just go out of here and say, I'm going to give my whole check because that's what worked for pastor. That's not what I'm telling you to do. I'm using that as an example to say, I didn't have nothing. You know, when you don't have anything, something's great. I'm looking at Pastor Tony here, who is a blessed, prosperous man, but I remember the time when he had eight hamburger helper without hamburger. Am I lying? They could not afford milk to make their macaroni and cheese cheesy. And that's not an exaggeration, is it? They'd sit those little kids down with macaroni noodles with no cheese. He sat down at the table one time with no food to give them. And they prayed. And a knock came on the door. And it was a lady with a stack of pizzas. I thought y'all might like some pizza. Remember that? Amen. But there was consistent sowing. I wrote about him in my new book that I'm going to get, that, I'm, that we're working on. But, but he... I. The thing that I noticed during that time, he never quit sowing. He never quit coming to church. If he said it, he did it. What was that time? Remember, you got some money for doing something. It was four or five hundred dollars. I forget what it was. A few hundred dollars. The, the, the seed that turned the whole thing around? Yeah. Yeah, someone had, uh, it was laid on their heart to give me five hundred dollars. And... Uh, I know it choke you up. <laughs> Somebody had the, the Lord had laid on someone's heart to give me five hundred dollars, and it was at a time like Pastor saying, "We're we're believing God. We're working all the things that we're taught," and that's one of the instructions that God gave me because He said, "Don't don't look at the money. Exercise what you've been taught." And so then I began to look and began to push into that and keep from complaining, praising God. I even told the kids, we don't complain about any. This is a temporary situation. Amen. God is bringing us temporary. through this, and we are increasing, <laughs> and this is changing. And they would, they would, you know, bless the food and thank God for the food, and we're going through these things, and here someone lays $500 in my hand. Like you're saying, anything is more, you know, it's like, you praise have God. Nothing. Amen. You gave me 10 bucks and I would have danced for it, praise God, because <laughs> it was, you know, having that God providing. And they laid that in my hand and God spoke to me and said, that's a seed. Go get it in the man of God's hands immediately. And you want to say, but Lord, <laughs> this will fill the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. You know, this will fill the cabinets. You know, this will do something. Yeah. I mean, this is $500. And... I, so I went immediately. I knew it was in my heart. So I'm going to go get it in the, in the hands of my pastor and, and, and get that over there. And I did. And uh, I knew something changed. Broke. I knew it broke. And a series of events happened. And me and my wife, 
uh, it came a time when an inheritance was going to come our way. And the Lord spoke to me during that because everybody, there's so many other voices that will come to you and tell you, either by thought or by person, to say, this isn't going to happen like you think it's going to happen. It's not going to be that easy. And they say, well, this is going to take this long and it's going to take months. And the Lord said, no. The seed that you sowed and you laid in your pastor hand has already made available all these funds. Amen. And they will come to you easy and they will come to you immediately. And they will be more than what they're saying. Amen. So I just, I, I, I began to shout and I told Paula at the time, I was like, the seed, the seed made the way for this. It's already done. That There's nothing to be concerned about. Amen. And immediately, and the money came and it was more than what they said. It was double what they said. That's right. And the money came, and it, and it was put in our hands, and things changed. From that point on, everything changed. Amen. And it wasn't the amount of money that changed. It was the anointing and the working That's of right. the word and the seed that changed right. it. Because I don't want, ever want anyone to think that I must have got some large amount, and that just set me for life. That's not what happened. Nope. The working of the word of God and the anointing and the power <laughs> of God, God's Amen. faithful. And you exercise that and you work it. And like Pastor teaching us, it's a step at a time. And from that point on, everything changed. Amen. Everything changed. The, the, the business was growing. Uh, everything exercised in my life. The business came about by the same means and continues to grow. The increase in my Amen. life continues to grow because of that. That seed. And that seed, you're never going to go any farther than you're willing to sow. My God, that'll preach. You're Amen. never going to go any farther than you're willing Amen. to sow. If you're wanting to increase right now, I'm telling you right now that it is by the, 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 what you're willing to put in the ground. Amen. What you're willing to put, and it's going to stretch you. But if you do not stretch, you will not grow. It will not increase. You can speak to it as much as you want until you are obedient until what the instruction of the Word of God says. It yeah. will not go that way Amen. until you take that step. Amen. But if you take that step, God is faithful. He is always faithful. Always. He is. Uh, come on. You got to look at those things right now. And those things are temporary. They are temporary and they are changing. They are moving. Even the things that you've already done, the things you set in motion by the seed that you've already sown and the things that you've said, the instruction that God said to say and you spoke out of your mouth, they are coming to pass. They are coming to pass. They are being moved. Even now, things have already changed and the manifestation of it will surely show up. It will surely show up. Glory to God. It will surely show up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Take a moment and just thank the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's, that's a prophetic word. Hallelujah. I believe God. We receive that, Lord. It will all come to pass. It will all come to pass. And I want you to understand something. It was at that season that we had, I had uh, uh, actually, Sister Salome is here, and you all know uh, uh, Apostle Eddie, amen, amen. In, uh, in Ghana, uh, pastor, and, and, and he's the overseer of our Faith Builders churches there in Ghana. Uh, I had only known him for about a year then, maybe a little more, and he wanted us to come to Ghana and do a crusade. And so we were going, and I had a group of people going with me, and Tony was trying to go, and uh, something didn't work out with his visa, uh, couldn't get it in in time or something. And, uh, uh, but... The night before I was, the night, well, the, it would have been a few days before I was supposed to, to fly out to go, we still were lacking almost $10,000 for that crusade because we were, we, were, we were paying for this thing and uh, we were still lacking this and uh, we had cast the care of it onto the Lord and uh, uh, I walked out of the church. It would have been, I think it was on a Sunday night, as a matter of fact. I walked out of the church and uh, Tony and Paula came up to me, and they said, he said, of course, Pastor, I can't go to the crusade. He said, but the Lord told us to give this to you for the crusade. And it was exact what we needed to pay the crusade off. Now, I want you to understand something. I'm not so much bragging on him as I am bragging on the principle that we've tapped into. So he didn't have anything, and God said, take that $500 and give it. Then an inheritance comes in. He still don't have anything. He still don't have a, a job. 
He's believing God for a business that he doesn't have a building for. And God gives this money into his hand and he takes nearly $10,000 to sow. How does that work? Not trusting in riches. Keeping what God needs in my mind. Am I making sense? Those of you that sowed for these chairs, that's seed. Every time you come in here and you see those new chairs, that's seed. You sowed seed towards that. There are people in here that sowed good amounts of money towards these chairs. There are people in here, you help pay these chairs off. Don't you ever sit down in that chair and not be grateful. That's your increase. There's increase coming into your life because of some chairs. I remember Barbara Sheffield sewing to me, and I won't tell you how much she sewed, but she sewed into this, that, that, these chairs, and she said, I'm sewing X amount of money for every one of my children. And I'm claiming chairs in this room for every one of them. That harvest will come to her. Miss Barbara, if you're watching me, that harvest will come to you. Am I helping you at all? Yes. So I had to learn that. The Lord asked me to do that three times. In that, in that time, the Lord asked me to sow my entire check three times. Now, I can qualify it by saying I was in a deep hole. I don't care if I was in a deep hole or not. Right. When God began to deal with him about the business that he wanted him to have, he was looking for a building, and he found the building and laid hands on it, and because he had sown seed, he could claim it as a harvest. And he called the lady up, and the lady said, no, we've already got somebody that's going to give us the money. I'll give you the short version. So, no. And I remember Pastor Tony just would not be deterred. He said, well, I want that building, so I believe that, that we're going to be there. He didn't get all preachy with the woman. Now, I have sown seed, lady. He just, right? right? And you know, the Lord prompted him to call her back. And they had already given her a check. They, they had the money. The other party had the money. And they were wanting to give more than he was giving. Yeah. And the lady said, you know what? I'm going to let you have that building. She said, they got more money than you, but I like you better. You say, well, pastor, what does that prove? His seed produced favor Amen. to have that building. Amen. you got to understand, when they came to this ministry, they didn't have anything. This is what they learned. And I learned it this way, too. You don't pray about it first. You sow about it first. You get your seed in the ground. Then you got something to attach your faith to. You can pray about a need till you're blue in the face. Amen. It's always going to come back to sow a seed. Yes, it is. Did you find Luke 6, 38? I'm almost done. Notice what it says. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So this is the law of increase. Stage one, Give. I look across this audience, and I'll be very honest with you. I don't know what anybody gives here. I don't check your giving. The only time we check on anybody's giving is if they want to do something in the church, and then they need to be tithing. And we just check and see if you're tithing. So I can say this because I don't have an ulterior motive. I don't work for you. I mean, you don't pay me to be your pastor. That's, that's, not why you give, that's not why this church gives me a salary. This church gives me a salary because I'm good ground. Amen. They sow into me. It's not a salary. You don't pay me. Amen. I'm not for sale. Right. You got to give. Yeah. I don't have an ulterior motive. No matter how much you give, my, 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 get, my receiving doesn't go up. Right. Right. If you gave a million dollars into this offering tonight, I don't get any of it. If you want me to have something, you personally give it to me. But if you put it in the offering, that's the church's money. 
I have a set salary. Are you following me? I'm telling you this for a reason. Stage one, step one, you have to give. Somebody, somebody called Mario. They, they wanted me to come minister at the church. Am I helping you at all? Yeah. They wanted me to come minister at the church, at their church. And they said, uh, well, uh, I forget exactly how it was, but what it came down to is uh, basically how would he like to do the money? Will he come for this or will he come for that? And Mario told him, he said, well, pastor, don't worry about the money. And I didn't worry about the money. And I went to that church. I went to that church that was a quarter the size of this church. And they were believing for a certain amount of money to sow into my life. And God doubled it. Hallelujah. See, it's not trusting in uncertain riches. I don't preach for a living. I give for a living. I preach because that's what I'm called to do. I give because that's the mode of increase. You give for a living. Your job is not your living. Your giving is your living. That is so important for you to understand. I'm, I'm saying all this because I want you to understand. No matter what you give in the offering, it doesn't affect anything. It's for you. You have to give. And what? It will be given to you. Now look, stage one, good measure. So it will come back to you a good measure. Well, a good measure could be more than what you gave. It's a good measure. But then, stage two, press down. Now see, this is important. You know how the, how the cereal companies and the chip companies cheat you, right? You buy, you buy that bag of chips and half of it is air? Because they press it down. Shake it together, right? They leave out the running over. That's good measure. Then it's pressed down. So God puts a good measure in there and presses it down. Then he shakes it together. Stage three, he shakes it together. So he takes the bag and shakes it together and settles it some more. So he can put more in it. And the final stage, stage four, is running over. Amen. That's increase. That's increase. So no matter what you need, you must increase to get it. God does not want us living on this level where we're getting by. I don't care in here if you're paying every bill. That's fine. It's what's at the end of the, of the month that's important. God wants you to increase to barely having enough to pay every bill, to have all sufficiency in all things and abound unto every good work. Amen. So when I was praying that day, I was thinking about the things that God wanted us to do. And I was, I was thinking about land and, and thinking about the building that's you know, three times bigger than the one we're in and, and all these different things. And, and I know that when you get a building three times bigger than the one you're in, that means you need three times more seats than you have. And, and you're going to have to have a much better sound system. And you're going to have to have more cameras and, and more carpet and more air conditioning. And, and, right? Huh? More bathrooms. That is important. Amen? So that means, wow. Because the building would be the easy part. But you get a building with three times more capacity, then you've got to have a parking lot that's three times bigger. You've got to have children's ministry places that are three times bigger. Because you're expecting three times more people. Because you're not getting a bigger place to have less people. So if you're not careful, you'll start thinking, okay, Lord, now, okay, you said to believe you for the land to put the building on. How am I going to do this? You have to increase. Then I factored in everything my wife's doing. You have to, because if she's doing it, I'm believing for it. You got to increase. 
Okay, but Lord, you told her that you want her to start pushing to go on this other network. Well, you got to increase. I've learned this. When God is putting more on my plate, He's increasing me. He's not taking from me. He's going to increase me. Somebody was telling me the other night, we were talking about some things, and the Lord spoke to them and said, you need to get ready to move. Well, they hadn't even thought about moving. But God says, get ready to move. Got to increase. Am I helping you? So whatever God begins to bring into your life, you're going to have to increase to do it. And the only way that I increase is to give so that I can enter into the good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm almost done. I'm going to encourage you on this point right here. I say this all the time, and I usually say it to people that want to change their life in some capacity. If you want something you've never had, you've got to do something you've never done. If I want to see a different level of prosperity in my life, I've got to go to a different level of sowing than I've ever been on. Amen? You just have to. There's, There's no way around that. There are things that we're believing for. There are ministry vehicles that we're believing for. And I know that we're going to get them because I personally have given seven cars away. My wife was sitting here one Sunday morning and had uh, a man in the church had graciously blessed her with a Ford Explorer. It was a nice vehicle. It was, it was the best vehicle she'd ever had up till that point. And she was sitting here and there was a woman that, that was coming to the church that was a single mother and had a Ford Explorer and her, the transmission went out on it. And she didn't have the money to fix it. She didn't have the money to get it fixed. So she was just going to have it junked. And then she didn't know what she was going to do. Sitting right over there where Pastor Marty Bell is sitting, the Lord asked my wife, she, he said, would you give me your Ford Explorer? And she said, Lord, I'll give you whatever you want. And he said, then you call that woman up and give her the keys. And remember, you're giving it to me. Amen. So all those vehicles are coming. Because there's seed in the ground. There's seed in the ground. But it takes takes that. I will never be without a house. Because I've given a house. I'll never be without a place to stay. That seed produces perpetually. Am I helping you? This is is increasing. This is increasing. And the sower has a right to take certain stands that the non-sower doesn't have. If you're a tither and a giver, you have tither's rights. He said he would rebuke the devourer for your sake. Not just financially. In any area. I was at the KCM Ministers Conference in January, and uh, Dr. Mark Barclay was ministering. And he told the story. His granddaughter this past summer was swimming in the pool in the back of their yard, and she got her hair caught in the drain of the pool. Nobody knew it. She got stuck on the bottom of the pool and drowned and died. They got her out of the pool, and she was dead. They called 911. And got the EMTs there and they're trying to revive her and she won't revive. They've they've done CPR, they've done chest compressors, she's dead. And the EMT got up off his knees and looked at her mother and was just shaking his head. And about that time her dad came came in the back and came up and they they were talking about how she was not living. And he went up there and he said, I come in the name of a tither. You will not devour my child. In the name of Jesus, you come back to life. And the EMT said, she came off the ground that far. Her spirit came back in her and she jumped off the ground. Amen. Well, they made them put her in the the ambulance. 
And she got to the hospital and they heard that they were bringing a young girl in that had drowned. So they had all the crash cart, they had everything there. And the doctor comes running out. Well, the little girl, when the doors opened, she just got out and ran in the hospital. <laughs> and the doctor said, well, where's the little girl that drowned? And the EMT goes, that's her. Her grandpa, Dr. Barclay, got to the hospital and she looked at him and she said, Grandpa, I'm just like Jesus. Both of us died and came back to life. Amen. 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 Because I come in the name of a tither. Amen. I have a right to do that. Amen. When, uh, let me finish with this because we're increasing, right? Amen. When, when my wife and I were facing a real challenge in our family, and you might face them. You got to understand that. I went to the Lord, and I said, I'm a tither. I will not be devoured. On the basis of my tithe, I will not be moved by what I'm seeing. Because you said you would rebuke the devourer for my sake. And Lord, you didn't say how quick it would happen, but you said it would happen. So that means the devourer will be rebuked before my family is devoured. Before my child is devoured, he will be rebuked. I'm like my wife. What I preach works. I'm not playing. Amen. And you know, do you know it took two years? But you know that situation turned? It turned. When we were believing God for our grandson, when he was born, and they were saying all these issues and all these things, I went in the name of a tither. It's not about the money. I'm in covenant with you. Amen. There's no hole in my covenant. I'm a tither. Amen. And on the basis of a tither, I take control over this situation. And I demand my grandson to be healthy. Amen. And I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost about it. And I hadn't prayed 30 minutes and I got a peace about it. Amen. Increase will make you bold. And I walked in that hospital room. We were all leaving. They brought my beautiful daughter-in-law back in, put her in the bed. And we were standing there with my son and her. And we, they, her family had left. And Pastor Michelle was hugging her and, you know, praying with her. And I walked over to the bed and I, I just took her face in my hands. And I said, now, Rebecca, you may not understand all this. I said, but we got this. Because I prayed about it and I got a note of victory. We got this. Just trust me. I know you don't understand it all, but you just trust me. Amen. Well, it happened just like God said it would. Amen. I will not be devoured. You need to understand that. When you put your tithe in this offering, when you put your tithe in this ministry, I'm not going to be devoured. I don't, I don't care what happens to everybody else. I'm not going to be devoured. Amen. Because I have tithers rights. So that covers your job. That covers your family. That if, listen, if you're having marital issues, you need to stand on the fact that you're a tither. My marriage will not be devoured in Jesus' name. Lord, you will not even let me screw it up. Just show me what I need to do. And I'll fix it. Because I don't want it to be devoured by me or anybody else. Oh, Lord Jesus. I hope you got something out of that tonight. Because we must increase. We must increase. Amen. We are, and, I, and I'll just tell you why we've got to increase. We're believing God for vehicles. Because we're, we're running back and forth to Arkansas. And it's just not good stewardship to keep renting vehicles. It's just not good stewardship of God's money. We have great favor with that company. We have great favor with Enterprise. They love us. They, they should. I'm pretty sure I pay one of those guys salary. Hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Just like bondages and afflictions 
would leave from people's physical body when Jesus would lay hands on them, poverty is going to leave your life like blindness left blind men. Just that quick. Lord, I receive that. I receive that. Thank you, Lord. So we must increase. Because we got to have them. No way around it. And they got to be new. They got to be in good shape. We got to have a couple of them. Because we're taking people back and forth. Amen. So we have to increase. The Lord, the Lord told me to start a transportation department. So I'm doing it. My pilot's in training right now. Yeah, but why would you need a plane? Because I'm increasing. Because very soon I'm not going to have churches just within driving distance. We've already got a church in Ecuador, church in Colombia, interested in coming into our fellowship, or at least being ordained with us. It's coming. I say it's coming. Yeah. Colombia. <laughs> Faith Builders Colombia. Constructores de Fe Bogota. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Think about it. I know I probably need to let you go, but the glory of the Lord is just strong. So we have to increase. And we're talking less about money and more about increase. Have to. We have to. Because the Lord has a lot of things for us to do. We've, we've got reentry homes we got to build. We got people getting out of prison that we got to help them. We, we can't just keep feeding them and building their faith in prison, then they get out and don't have anywhere to go. We got to do that. Amen. The, the Lord told me to start pressing into that, and I am. I have to increase. Because we got to build the building. It's got to be on our site because it's, 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 it's too expensive to have to jump through all the hoops to put ex-offenders in a neighborhood. It's got to be on our property. So we got to increase. I know that sounds like a lot, but I'm just telling you. We got to increase. Well, Pastor, how are we going to do that? You're going to increase and you're going to give. And we're going to take what you give and build. Amen. It's just that simple. Amen. Amen. I'm in faith. You're in faith. We're all in faith. It's just a matter of time. Do you believe that? Stand up tonight. I hope you receive tonight.